All right, then I will call the Finance and Operations Committee meeting of Tuesday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. We're meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. And we will move into the 2021 uh, financial report to year to date. Matt. Thank you, Lou. We're going to look at our highlights as of February 19th last week. Our current re forecast is projected at $505,000 under budget. We are still favorable. This is a decrease from the prior period where we were at 691, but this is net as between the, the two periods, we did approve a transfer of $255,000 for the Go Math project. Getting into the detail under personal services salaries, we have potential savings of $375,000. We were at 450,000 in the prior period. We adjusted what we have for the teachers and those who are unpaid FMLA because of part of that GoMap transfer came from some of the teacher salary lines. So we had to reduce that a little bit. We have two new items under here, which is our projected tutor hours based on current year usage and prior year actuals. We also have some additional grant funding this year that are covering some of the tutor salaries. That's a savings of $25,000. And our anticipated para and substitute para hours are down compared to this time at last year. So we're projecting a savings of about $25,000. Under personal services benefits, we have unbudgeted expenditures of $42,000 for the February period. Back in January, we were looking at $25,000. So within this uh, object code, we have the Medicare Part B commitment to retirees. That is a projection of $20,000 over budget in the prior period we we're at 15. So we just adjusted that $5,000 based on some of the documentation that's coming from the retirees that will pay out in June. We have a projected life insurance premium cost. This is $10,000 over budget. This is new for this period. And it's just based on where we are with our current staff and the premiums paid based on those salaries. We also have the unemployment invoice from a prior period. We were at $10,000 in January, now we're at $12,000, a, a minimal adjustment just based on uh, what we're trending for the remainder of the year. The savings under benefits of just under $26,000, which is related to HSA contributions and employee education reimbursement, this number is the same for the February period as it was in January. Going on to the second page, we have the major object code of purchase professional and technical services. We have potential savings of 127,500. Back in January, we were at 62,500. So we have a significant increase in this object category. Uh, we're looking at projected costs related to pupil services, contracted pupil services for special education. This is a new item for this period and we're projecting savings of $50,000. We're, we're looking at where we are in the current year versus where we were last year and also projecting out through the end of June. And we think this $50,000 will be realized over the next few months. Uh, we have $7,500 related to field trip admission costs. This is the same as it was in prior period, obviously with COVID and the environment we're in that these are not occurring. Uh, we have projected employee training development costs that are lower than budget at $10,000. That's the same as it was in January as well. And then our anticipated legal costs, special education and labor law, general ed as well. We're looking at savings of $60,000. In January, we reported about $45,000. The next major object category, purchase property services. We have potential savings of $25,000 related to spending for instructional repairs and maintenance. We were at $20,000 in January. So we just looked at what we've spent over the last month compared to the prior year and projected out through June and we increased that by about $5,000. Other purchase services, this is a large category here. Unbudgeted expenditures of $670,000. We were at 607 in January. So we've got an increase there. Uh, we have the additional route for out of district technical school transportation. That's the same as it was from the beginning of the year. We have an increase in district outplacement costs, and we're expecting a reduction in the excess cost reimbursement. 
This still has not come in from the state. Our first installment has not been posted. So this is another major variable that by the March meeting, we will know for sure what we received. And then the second payment will come later in the year. But we're, we're definitely projecting a decrease there. We're at 620,000 for un, unbudgeted expenditures. We're at 570 in January. And a new item here, we have an increase in the VOAG tuition. This is for the Glastonbury VOAG program. $13,000, we just have, we exceeded our budgeted enrollment based on those students who are attending and the tuition we have to pay. Potential savings under other purchase services, we are at just under $640,000. Last period, we were at 740. And some of this is due to that go math transfer because we did reduce our magnet tuition line and that's reflected. But within the detail here, we have savings under in-town special education transportation. We were at 50,000 in January. And as we've done the analysis over the last month, we're looking at about $100,000 in savings on those routes. We have a decrease with the out of district transportation as well. We were at about 191,000 last period and we're at $200,000 this time. So just a minimal increase, but we're trying to get a little tighter as the months go on. Some items remain the same. Our athletic transportation is 30,000 as it has been for a few months. Savings from regular and special education field trips. What I mentioned in the one of the other object codes where we do not pay the admission fees for field trips. We also do not pay the transportation as those are not occurring. We had our student accident insurance premium came in about $4,600 under budget. And I believe our carrier Bollinger Insurance did this to all the districts they cover. It was essentially about a 15% reduction due to COVID. So that was a, a nice savings that we saw this year. We also have our decrease in uh, outplacements for public facilities. So we're looking at $125,000 potential savings there. We were at 175 in January. So a little adjustment based on how our tuition is coming in. Uh, one student at a state place private facility, we're looking at savings of 110,000 versus budget. We had forecasted 160 in the prior period. Again, these numbers get trued up as the invoices come in and we determine what related services each student is receiving. And then our magnet tuition potential savings is down to 40 from 100 in the prior period. And this is one of the accounts we use for the go math transfer. And our final major category is supplies, $25,000 potential savings due to our spending with the hybrid model. And that was the same number in the prior period. So again, 505,000 projected savings through year end. That's a fantastic number considering what we were also able to do this year with the Chromebook purchase and the GoMath three-year commitment. Great, thank you, Matt. Any questions on that report? I just, ha I, I just have one question and um, perhaps Michael or Trent was there. Have we had many resignations this year? For next year's budget, we have two WFT members built into the budget, and then there was one that came after the draft. So that's certainly lower than the last several years. Are those, oh. retire those are retirements, Matt? Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, retirements. I'm, I'm not thinking resignations. Yeah, off the, off the top of my head, Bobby, I know there was one classroom teacher resignation earlier in the year, uh, and we've replaced that position. Um, but that's been it. We've been pretty stable. Um, we certainly had staff members uh, out on medical leaves, but we've had multiple uh, staff members that were out on leave that have since returned. So been uh, very stable, actually. Great. Great to hear. Lou, I have a question. Yeah. Thank you, Lou. Um, Matt, if we are able to get the middle school and high school kids back in March or April, but at some point, likely they're going to come back this year. What, if any, significant impact would it have? Could it have on these numbers? I don't think it will have a material impact. You know, your your large items are really transportation, and we're paying our contractors as if they were running on a full schedule because they are disinfecting and doing some additional cleaning on with the hybrid model at this point. So I don't see any impact there as far as spending related to 
consumables and the repairs and maintenance that we talked about, it, it's not going to be material to a $58 million budget. So minimal impact if the buildings are full again for the last few months of the year. And that yeah, very minimal. I, okay. You're not going to see this 505,000 projection go down to 200,000. Got it. Thank you. Great. Yeah. I have go a ahead, question, Jim. Lou. Oh, Matt. I think, okay. Jim, I have first. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if we look at uh, other purchase services, am I understanding it right? So it's 670,000 more that we're spending because of an additional route. And we're losing six hundred and twenty thousand in the excess cost decretion. The six twenty is the aggregate of additional students at private facilities and the decrease in excess cost. It's a combination, and I think I didn't do it in February, but in December and January, I did send the committee the uh, tuition reconciliation as far as what facilities were budgeted, the number of students, and then what our projection was through the end of the year. And that's where it had the detail of placement and the excess cost reimbursement. Right, but between those two line items, we're 1.3 million, like under budget in theory, over budget, right? Because of that, uh, we're getting 600,000 less than you thought and we're paying out 600,000 more. Am I reading that right? We have unbudgeted of 670 and potential savings of 639. So it's almost a wash, you're really only 30,000 negative. Okay, so the 620 is a savings from the excess cost reimbursements? No, no. The, the six, so the way I, I wrote that line, the 620 is an unbudgeted number, but it's a combination of unbudgeted students at an outplacement and then the reduction in excess cost. I'd have to pull up the sheet, but I want to say the reduction in excess cost is about 200000 So then the unbudgeted outplacement tuition is 420000 but combined with the 620 because we're not receiving that. What we projected for revenue in the budget last year is gonna come in 200,000 less in that particular line. Okay. Jim. Hi Lou. Um, Matt, I just had a, a question. I'm just looking at the savings uh, and it's talking about the elimination of in town special education routes for 100,000 and and then there's the number of 200,000 i mean how many how many students is that and is that just like one route or several it seems like quite well, a big number it's a combination jim we, as far as in town when we did our budget for the current year back in december we had a a wheelchair route in town that was required and then by the time we had our approved and adopted budget we determined that that student would not need that transportation for the current year. And that was a large expenditure that that's about $50,000 that was not needed for the current year. And then with the hybrid model, we were able to consolidate some of the routes because not every parent guardian is using the transportation. And then with the outplacement, a lot of the savings is derived from how these facilities are scheduling the days in the building our contractor is only billing us for those days traveled. So if there's a extended closure or they're in some kind of hybrid model, we're not getting billed for days that there's no transportation, which is fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, discussion on the 2021-22 budget. Nothing. Well, I can provide an, an update. Obviously, we've uh, been together quite a bit over the past uh, couple of weeks with regard to uh, three budget workshops. Um, so as you know, um, I have a, a proposed budget uh, that demonstrates a 2.7% increase over the current operating budget. Um, it does include a couple of new administrative positions. Uh, and it, um, I think, really strives to be as responsible as possible. So um, the bulk of the increase is related to contractual uh, increases uh, with regard to our bargaining units. And uh, I know with health insurance, we've seen a slight increase. Am I correct, Matt? About 2%? 2%. 
which is significantly less than our increase last year, which hovered around 13%. So um, we've had multiple discussions and budget workshops. I will be presenting uh, the superintendent's proposed budget to the full board on Tuesday, March 9th at which time um, it will go before the board for action. At that point in time, we will then uh, transmit it over to town council. Uh, by charter, we have to do that by March 15th. Great, thank you. Lou, okay. yeah. a quick question on that. Matt, can you refresh my memory? What does that 2.7% uh, number, percentage mean in dollars? How much of a dollar increase is that? Just over 1.5 million. 1.5. Okay. I think it was one one five three four. Got it. Perfect. That's all. Thank you. Any other business? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, Lou. Uh, I just want to make sure I let the committee know that uh, we are uh, working on the needs assessment for the ESSER funding. Uh, that's certainly going to be uh, funding that we're going to look to utilize to support our students as well as our staff as we uh, come out of the pandemic. Um, so we had administrative team this morning and the uh, admin team went through the needs assessment and talked about priorities and how we would um, allocate these funds. So uh, certainly more to come on that uh, as we uh, hone in on what those priorities are going to be. But we're certainly looking to provide supports for students. Great. Anyone else? Lou. Yes. Michael, when do we get those that monies? At this point in time, Chuck, I originally got word that the uh, grant was going to open yesterday. Um, it has not opened at this point in time. What we understand at this juncture, it was supposed to open uh, before March 1st. So it could be tomorrow, it could be Friday. Uh, and I anticipate it's going to be open for approximately a month. Am I correct, Matt? Is that what they said yeah. at the webinar? So, I'm assuming as it expires or funds need to really be obligated by June 2023, that it's essentially a 7-1-21 through 6-30-23 period. It's typically how a two-year federal grant works. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Great. If there's nothing else, we'll take a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. I'll second it. Thank you. See you soon. See you at Sally, everybody.